guys, welcome to Sweet Pearl Properties and thanks so much for checking out my channel. Today I did take a break from tiling and we actually started converting our cargo trailer while it was nice and cold and I'm really excited to show you guys. Now there's going to be a part one, a part two, and maybe a part three and then we will do a full video tour when we get everything set up. I will update all the links to those videos as we get them done in the description below. So I hope you guys check those out. Today is just part one. And also, if you guys are converting your own trailer, I will also link um, the products that I talk about in the description below if I can find them. So let's get right to it. I can't wait to show you guys. So I think 2020 was kind of like living in the twilight zone and while everyone was trapped inside, especially if you had kids, the last thing you wanted to do was be trapped inside. You wanted to get out. So we did what any reasonable adult does with their stimulus check. and We ran out and bought this trailer. We also thought, well, this would be a great way to travel for really cheap because we won't have to spend the money on hotels. We're taking out our camper for the first time. Just got everybody loaded up. The kids are screaming, acting like maniacs. We're gonna see what it's like. So we bought this trailer in July and after taking it out on our first trip, we realized there's just more work that really needs to be done on it before we can really take it out and enjoy it fully. Now originally we didn't do a whole lot to it when we first got it because 2020 was just a really crazy and busy year for us so we didn't really start working on it until this year. One of the first things that we did do is we took off the decal that we bought it from because we want it to be our own and not advertising for the place where we bought it. We also went around and checked every little area because there was some sharp metal sticking out from where they screwed it in. But other than that, we didn't really do a lot to it until this year. So my husband was working at home until recently and during that time, we would sometimes go out on his lunch break and do little projects to the trailer. And one of the first things that we did was install a door handle on the door and that way we could close it from the inside which I thought was pretty cool. We also installed a little chain lock for added security. And to keep ourselves from getting locked in at night we installed one of these bracket things from that we bought from Amazon on the other side so that we could lock it into place at night while we were sleeping. Now the bar wouldn't actually lock down without this piece of wood behind it, pushing it out a little bit. So we did have to install this piece of wood behind it, but I spray painted it the same color and I feel like it blends in pretty nicely. Another simple project we did was seal the rooftop with this like rubberized paint and it's supposed to seal everything. You wanna make sure that you completely clean off your roof before you apply any paint and you want to do about three to four coats. It also helps to reflect light and add a little layer of insulation and keep your trailer a little bit cooler. I'll place a link in the description below if you want to grab your own. One of the evenings my husband got bored and removed a panel from the wall. He was really itching to go put some insulation in the wall and that was the catalyst that set everything into motion for us to convert our trailer camper. So for the next three weeks it was nothing but grueling hard work but I'm really glad that we did it when we did because now it's super hot and sticky and the weather was nice cool and crisp with no mosquitoes for those three weeks that we worked really hard. One thing that we learned the hard way is if you're going to take something down and put everything back you want to make sure that you do pre-pictures so that you can go back and reference them. So that's what we did here. So we originally started out insulating the walls with half inch foam. However, later on we decided to use one inch foam because that's what the walls fit perfectly. So I started off by measuring the area and then I would mark everything off with a Sharpie. All right, show your amazing work. All right, we're gonna stick this in here like so. still too, too long. Shouldn't be. This is one of those things that after you do it for a little bit, you start getting faster and faster. And even if it didn't fit perfectly, you could usually cram it in there. Now, I don't like to waste materials and I tried cutting and utilizing every square inch of this foam that I had. And if there were little gaps in the wall, I would try to fit little pieces of scrap foam into them. The only problem with this foam is it's super, super messy and it's not great for the environment, unfortunately. I really wanted to go with the wool installation, but it was so expensive, like hundreds of dollars, and I just didn't have the budget for it, so we had to settle for this. 
and we use this sort of aluminum foil type tape to kind of cover all the edges to keep any air gaps from coming through. There were some gaps in certain areas that I didn't cover, I just taped over them. And if I could go back and do it over again, I wish I would have just used the spray foam to cover any gaps before taping over them. One of the cool things that we did notice as we were installing the insulation in the cargo trailer is that it seemed to make the whole trailer a lot more sturdy. Like the wind wasn't just like blowing the trailer around and rattling it. We noticed when the wind blew, it was a lot quieter and it just seemed to add a little more stability to our trailer as a whole. These little rogue styrofoam balls about drove me batty. So I found the best way to clean the wall is using my little handheld dustpan. It really knocked everything off and got it cleaned up for me just the way I like it. And I know you're not gonna see any of it once the plywood goes back over it, but I'm a little OCD about a few things and hey, that's okay. If you're a little OCD like me, like this video. Let me know how many of you are out there. And if you're wondering, how did you guys get all of this done with all of your little munchkins? Well, a lot of times we'd let them come out and we would feed them Brahms or something while we did a little work. Sometimes we got them involved on various tasks, but most of the time they were honestly kind of in the way, especially once we really got going on the walls and needed to do more things. So during the week, what we would do is we'd put them down for bed around 7.30 to 8, and then we would start working until 11 o'clock at night. On the weekends, we found that if we took them out to play somewhere and let them burn some of their energy off then fed them a really nice lunch, we could give them their games, their Kindles, and for the rest of the day, they would pretty much do their own thing, and we were able to get a lot of work done that way. It did kind of stink though because I really missed taking them to the lake and spending more time with them, but I kind of figured we're sacrificing now so that we can spend a lot more quality time with them in the future. So when we were doing the insulation, we would install a certain section at a time. And once we finished that section, my husband would put the plywood back onto the trailer. That way it was kind of done and out of the way. Now because we decided to reuse the plywood to save on costs, I wanted to make sure that the plywood was in good shape, so I made sure that we removed all of the staples before putting the plywood back onto the walls. And that was a chore, I'm not gonna lie. One of the best ways I found to do it was to take a hammer and kinda go behind the plywood and hammer the staples, you know, out and then pull it off with the screwdriver. That was the easiest way I found to do it. But it was a lot of hard work and there were some spots that we just couldn't get them pulled out, but we got most of it. It felt amazing completing each section. It just got us more and more excited as we went. There were a couple of items that made this job a lot easier and that was this little $39 fold-up table I got from Walmart, which I'm gonna later use for when we go camping as maybe a dinner table or a kitchen table. But I was able to put my tools on this and my drinks on it and I didn't have to bend over so far. Now the table was small and lightweight so I was able to easily move it around the camper as I worked on different sides. And I definitely recommend grabbing you one if you're gonna do a conversion because you're gonna be able to continue to use it as you go camping. One of the other things that was fantastic were these little solar lights that we had. That really lit up the area and allowed us to work. Now we actually purchased these to use when we go camping as they're solar. However, they worked great for when we were converting the camper and needed that extra bit of light. And it was great to test them out and see how they were actually going to function. Now we were originally gonna do like the big solar panel battery and electric in the camper but after watching a ton of youtube channels we just didn't quite understand how to hook up electricity run a battery and connect the solar power all that stuff just went completely over our heads not only that but we'd either have to hire somebody we'd have to buy the electricity kit the solar kit and it was going to set us back a lot longer and we wanted to get started camping as soon as possible now down the road maybe on our second build we'll probably incorporate all the bells and whistles but for this one, we'll probably just use a little bit of solar power and eventually we are gonna buy a Jackery so we can charge our phones and run a blender and just a few simple things like that. Now, when it came time to insulate the ceiling, the only tricky part was measuring for this corner nose piece. It was a little bit tricky and as you can see, I did measure a little off. So I just stuffed some extra scrap pieces in the little holes. However, I wish I would have just sprayed the holes with the spray insulation because it probably would have been better insulated that way. Now, once we installed this weird nose piece, in the corner the rest of it was just large triangles so it went really smooth until the very last piece and it always seems to be the last piece that is the most difficult we couldn't get it to stay on it kept kind of drooping but that's okay we were getting ready to install the ceiling and the ceiling would keep it up there just fine 
We also ended up cutting a new piece of plywood here because as you can see, it doesn't stretch from end to end. Now we had to reinstall some of the plywood onto the wall because it was a little bit crooked. And in order to do that, we had to go back and buy an actual impact driver. And we found this really cool set from Dewalt that had an oscillating tool that we needed, an extra drill that was battery powered, also included the impact driver we needed. And we really liked this set. It was the only thing that really allowed us to screw into the metal. I hated the sound of him screwing into the metal. It was like such a god-awful sound. We ended up recutting out this piece of plywood over here by the door to make it one solid piece and it just made it look a lot nicer. And I got ahead of myself and started adding trim around the door, which I wish we would have waited on that. In hindsight now as a side note we didn't end up reusing the trim that came with our trailer it just looked too generic and cheap and we wanted to upgrade the look just a little bit so we went to Lowe's and found this like compressed board it was small and lightweight and it fit the look that I was going for and gave us just a little bit of an upgrade than what we originally bought the trailer with I think the only solid wood trim we used was for the baseboards in the end which you'll see in the next video now I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead here and show you guys how we insulated the doors and then in our next video, we'll talk about how we did all the other finishing touches like painting and laying flooring and doing the ceiling. So for me, figuring out how to take off these doors, take them apart and insulate them, put them back together and put them back on the camper was very dreadful. I didn't enjoy it, but I'm so glad that we actually did take them apart because we discovered some rotten wood in them. These doors were not easy to take apart. We had to figure out what type of tools we needed and luckily someone in a Facebook group told me exactly what type of bit that I needed and my father-in-law happened to have a whole set of them and he graciously let us borrow his tools so that we could continue our project. So I helped my husband while he uninstalled the doors. We brought them all in the house. We took them apart. They had a wood frame with a piece of plywood on the back, a piece of sheet metal on the front, and a piece of metal trim around the whole thing. Now the front door was in great condition, but the two back doors had water damage on the bottom of the wood frame. I believe that water had seeped in, it wasn't sealed good enough through the metal frame of the door. So I was really glad that we caught this. So what we did is we put a heat gun on it for a long time, trying to get all the moisture out that we could. The next day we set them out in the hot sun. I added a layer of kills to help protect it from any further damage. I also made sure to prime and paint the plywood that would be facing on the inside of the camper. And once we put the doors back together and installed them back onto the trailer, we added an extra layer of sealant all over the doors and the camper to help prevent any other water issues in the future. I was hoping I'd be able to get the whole conversion in one video, but it looks like I'm gonna have to make a part two, maybe even a part three. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how we installed our ceiling and our floor and started adding all the fun details. Hope you guys will stay tuned until then and thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day or night.